Hello everyone! I'm happy today. My friend Emma Hanma wanted to share her best memories with me. Isn't that good? <laughs> Won't you feel happy with that? I am very happy and honored to be a part of it. And she wanted to spend that moment in the bell tower. She wanted to do reflection about the significance of bell tower. And I haven't ring the bell before, so I will get a chance to ring the bell. Hello everyone, this is my friend Emma and of course I'm Gracie. We're gonna climb up in that tower there. The bell tower. <laughs> That's called the bell tower, Perth Western Australia. I'm very happy and <laughs> feel proud that I'll be celebrating with my friend Emma her <laughs> business award. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so basically, um, if you don't know who I am yet, my name is Emma from Health World Pharmaceuticals. Most of you know me as Health World, and, but within Health World, there's three major divisions that I deal with. And they... They are the exporting side of things, which is uh, under Health World Pharmaceuticals. Pharmacy deals with the pharmacy side of things. And then I've also got Health World Organisation, which with helping charity, helping and assisting charity. And yeah, so yeah. Perth Cool Magazine was out. So that um, but the main reason behind that was um, I had a new product launch at oh, yep. Emma's and uh, uniquely my name <laughs> yeah so e-h-m-a apostrophe s within that there's two sub brands uh, we've got uh, biomedical mm -hmm. which is the anti-aging supplements and things like that plus all the vitamins mm -hmm. and uh, ms cosmetics which is the skincare well in the middle of london the very famous square called trafalgar square and just on one edge of trafalgar square is this church which you can see is called St. Martin nice. in, in the, the fields. fields. I think you can see from this picture that it's not likely to be any fields around in the middle of London. However, this church was built in 1726 and then there were some fields around the church. And the reason why they named it St. Martin in the Fields, not just St. Martin's, was there was already a St. Martin's church in London. Mm. And they still wanted to be allied with St. Martin because apparently he looked after the poor and fed them and stuff. Yeah. So, and it was built just to service a little parish in London. Nothing untoward, except within that parish is Buckingham Palace. Mm -hmm. So therefore, oh, yeah, yeah. it is the local church for the King and Queen of England. And in 1726, the King was George II, and he decided that as was his church, he'd like to have some bells in it. So he organised 12 bells to be made and go inside the church. It's a lot of bells probably most bells in any church in England at that time. And those bells would ring out for any important occasion that occurred in London. Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, Nelson's victory. These bells rang out to celebrate when they found the news. And connection to Australia, in 1771, these bells rang to celebrate Captain Cook's circumnavigation award. Yeah. As I say, the bells were in the tower for many, many years and ringing out for every occasion. However, in the 1980s, which is quite a long time I've been ringing, mm -hmm. the bells were getting very hard to ring. And when they did ring the bells, the steeple was shaking and cracks were starting to appear mm -hmm. and they were really worried that the whole thing's going to fall down. So they said to the you can only ring the bells once a year, but just use the small bells, all right? Mm -hmm. Well, that wasn't very satisfactory. <laughs> so. Eventually the church got together enough money to fix the problem and the way they were going to fix it was to take the bells out, take the belfry out where they hang the bells, put in a new belfry with modern materials, lighter, stronger, everything swings around a lot easier. When the ropes come down all the pulleys were fixed so that they rotate a lot easier. And to stop the damage to the tower they were going to melt all the bells down and make some smaller bells. Well, I'll make life heard about that. He said, don't do it, it's sacrilege. All the history that's in those bells, all those times they've rung out. He said, look, how about, we'll give you enough material to make the new bells, whatever size you like, 
and you give us the old bells. Our church said, great idea, because it makes it cheaper for them. So they agreed. So in 1988, to celebrate our bicentennial, so they gave us the bells. At the same time, Leith organised for a new bell to be made. The company that supplied all the materials for the other bells donated three new bells. And the City of Westminster, part of London, also donated a bill. And all those bills came out to us in 1988. Old yeah. bills oh, yeah. and five new ones. Oh, yes. All came out in 1988 and went into a warehouse. In 1990, they're still sitting in the warehouse. In 1992, guess what? Still sitting in the warehouse. Nothing's happening. Anyway, leading up to the millennium, year 2000, Richard Court was Premier of WA, said to Perth and WA, come on, let's celebrate the millennium. Everyone around the world, they're doing visitor things. In England, they've got a big eye in the sky thing going around. Everywhere you go, they're creating a new tourist attraction. Well, Perth and WA with our usual enthusiasm for an <laughs> idea like that. So do cheers. <laughs> ah, <why bother? laughs> yeah. It's just another year. So what? Big deal. It's got more norms. <laughs> oh, I thought that went well. Anyway, it wasn't to be put off. He said, come on. You've got to do something. And someone said, hey, why don't we build a bell tower? We've had all these bells sitting around since 1988. Time we go in my home. And so with a bit more moaning, this bell tower was built for the year 2000. And to celebrate the millennium, the state of WA donated one more bell. So you all know now we've got 18. There we go. We've got the hang of it now, haven't we? <laughs> okay. Now those bells ring out at any special occasions. And the bell ringers ring them. When the bell ringers ring the bells, they ring them in a sequence. So they go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, a bit like that. Mm. A long time ago, one of the bell ringers said, it's pretty boring. Why don't we do something different? Oh, you yeah, like what? One go, one, two, three, four, five, one, three, four, five, two, one, four. Every time they go around, they change the sequence, ring in the bells. Mm. And so, I wrote music, the bell ringing, and that's oh, what it looks like. Oh, so it's a series of numbers yeah. that change every time. Mm. And there's another. Hi guys, so this is what the 2020 Stevie Awards look like. Stevie Award 2020? Yeah. So finally my Stevie Awards arrived last week. And then this is what the 2019 Stevie Awards look like. I'm actually pretty happy with both of them. <laughs> they still look beautiful. <laughs> Hi Emma, what kind of Stevie Award you got in 2020? Uh, so the Stevie Award um, I won was the uh, Female Entrepreneur of the year 2020 award. Wow! <laughs> wow! And, yeah. and the 2019? What's the other uh, The same as well. I saw one. Wow! Um, both the 2019 and 2020. Um, yeah, so it is a USA award and it's international. And yeah. <laughs> wow, that's very good. That's a very nice achievement. <laughs> Proud of you, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. And for a round, Change the sequence, ring in the bells. Mm. And so I wrote music, the bell ringing. And that's oh, what it looks like. Oh, so it's a series of numbers yeah. that change every time. Mm. And there's another one. So if you're some sort of mathematician, you can work out there's lots and lots and lots of different ways you can ring the bells. Yeah. Somebody wrote a lot of them down. You get them in a little book. Is that a Bible? Okay. Numbers. Yeah, yeah. it's a Numbers. combination. Combination. Again, they have a special occasion, so they raise one of these boards around the room. So, for instance, this one in 2001, they did 5,184 rings. Mm. It took them three hours and three minutes ringing 10 bells here in Perth. And you can see it's got a funny name it's Plain Volcators. 
all these different rings have strange names. And on the back here, this is actually a copy of a plug that's inside St. Martin's because it records that in seven. in St. Martin's, right? Remember that's 1788. Then, in 2003, a group called the Ancient Society of College Youths, so they got older, <laughs> they did the same ring, 6,204 ring, a bit quicker, four hours and 18 minutes, ringing the 12 bells here in Perth, the same 12 bells were ringing in 1788 inside St. Martin's, the same group did the same ring all those years later. Wow. So when the bell ringers ring the bells, they always start with the bell in this position because it doesn't take much effort to ring the bell oh. and it comes up the other side. So before they start ringing, when they come and do a peal, which they will be doing here at 12 o'clock, they want to make sure the bells they're going to ring are all up. So if they come in here, and they say, as against the bells being down, if they come in here, they say, Oh, come on, Mabel, we've got bell these bells up. This one was down yesterday. Come on, let's give it a good hard pull. So they don't think it's up, they think it's down. So they pull it really, really hard. And it whizzes around, the rope flies up in the air. They fly up in the air or hang themselves and all sorts of parade. All those comedy things you've seen on TV about bell ringers running up and being flown in the air could happen. So they have a code. If you look above your head, See all those ropes have a knot in the end of the rope? Yeah. If there's a knot in the end of the rope, the bell is up. If, like these ropes, no knot, the bell is down. Now, these are the bells you're all going to ring because we can't have you ringing bells that are in the up position because we 